David Blatt indicated yesterday yes. that the Cavs would be careful with LeBron's minutes this preseason. Well, we're hearing now that James received an injection in his back this week, according to multiple sources, and he's unlikely to play again in the preseason. The news was first reported by Ohio.com. James received a similar anti-inflammatory shot in January when he was shut down for two weeks. So by doing it now, he won't miss any significant time. The Cavs open the regular season in Chicago on October 27th. Stephen A., should the Cavs be concerned at all about LeBron's health? It depends. Uh, LeBron takes phenomenal care of himself. We all know that. But Father Tom is undefeated. And when you consider the mileage that has been put on his body, he's only human. Um, and I think that the reason I say it depends is because it's going to be contingent upon the Cavs and what they surround him with. See, this is why somebody like a Tristan Thompson, there's no excuse for him not to be signed and sealed and in the Cleveland Cavaliers lineup. There really is no excuse whatsoever. Kyrie Irvin is out for a few months. Uh, we don't know about the health of Kevin Love due to that shoulder. We hope that he's going to be all right. Moskov is considered to be at about 60%. Iman Shumpert now has a wrist injury. I think Matthew Dellavedova has got ankle issues. We don't know what the health is for the Cleveland Cavaliers. And when you look at it from that perspective, Listen, I like David Griffin. I think that he's done a decent job. I think that he dropped the ball in terms of getting them a quality backup before last year's postseason, which is, explains why Mo Williams, a 13-year vet, is now on their squad now. He should have been there last year, to be quite honest with you. But when you look at the health of the rest of these players, combined with Tristan not being signed, it seems like the Cavaliers are sort of gearing themselves to put just as heavy, if not even more of a heavier load on LeBron James' shoulders moving forward. Now, he's not going anywhere from everything that I hear. He's in Cleveland to stay. He's not leaving again. Uh, he wants to win a championship. But I am firmly of the mindset, Skip, that if LeBron James is successful in bringing a championship back to Cleveland, OK, for the first time since Jim Brown did it in 64, if he's successful, but he looks at the Cleveland Cavaliers and they still find themselves in a position for him to carry the heaviest load. I don't rule out him departing again. That's what I've been told. And as unbelievable as that may be, keep in mind, that's the only thing that could potentially make him turn his back on Cleveland. It's the organization and the help that they put around him. He has to be satisfied with that. And I'm not sure he is at this juncture because Kyrie Irving has never been healthy. Kevin Love is now not necessarily healthy nor reliable, not just because of his shoulders, but because of his back and his knees. And you're talking about the possibility of Tristan Thompson not being there after next season. It looks like a shaky situation. They better be careful. Don't take him for granted. Okay, but the question is strictly about LeBron's health going forward. And I'm going to suggest this is a significant development here with the back. The back can be a problem, and he's had ongoing back issues that could slow him down, maybe not shut him down. But I'm going to play a little armchair doctor here, and I'm going to guess the injection in question here was your basic epidural steroid injection that most people get at L5-S1, the bottom disc mm -hmm. in the small of your back, because that's the one that usually acts up, especially for athletes, because it'll float a little bit, it'll touch a nerve here or there, you get a little shooting pain down your legs, maybe into your feet, and it just, the nerves are irritated, and the cortisone in that injection will help knock out some of the inflammation. They said that LeBron got a similar injection last year when he took his little hiatus, a couple of weeks off to regroup a little bit, recharge. He's high mileage. And Stephen A., what I know people say I'm a LeBron critic, but, but I often applaud and laud him for he, he doesn't get protected enough by the referees. You know and I know he is a high collision player. When he drives the lane, it's open season on LeBron James, and he takes a lot of shots. It reminds me of your basic NFL running back who has kind of a finite number of years that you can play because 
there are only so many hits you can take in, in one man's body. So LeBron's taken a lot of hits in the lane. I'm sure he'll take more this year. And if, if the back flares up, obviously if you get a herniated disc or you, know, you, you get sciatic pain where you just can't even walk sometimes, that would be a problem. And, and he's flirting with that right now, and they're trying to hold it off. I don't blame them for keeping him out for the rest of the preseason. And they are really going to have to go Popovich this year. Blatt's going to have to go Popovich and really limit LeBron's minutes and maybe give him periods of rest games off, almost like Tim Duncan, because he's played that many, that many sort of high minutes over time. It's adding up to like a Tim Duncan career. And I hope David Blatt, all the way up to, to the management, I hope they see fit to protect him over time. Well, they need to. And that's why I think that I was answering a direct question in terms of how concerned should the Cavaliers be, because it's not just about his back. It's about the load you're going to put on his back and his arms and his shoulders and his legs because you're asking him to carry the weight because the bodies that you are putting around him are at least somewhat disabled. Those are the kind of concerns that they should have because if you don't have healthy dudes around LeBron, he has to carry a load that he otherwise wouldn't have to carry. This is the bad luck that has come along with him in recent memory. I think they have at least one more championship in them if Dwayne Wade is 100% when he was in Miami. I think they win the chip now. They're just standing here today as the reigning defending NBA champions if Love and Kyrie Irving were healthy. But he hasn't been lucky at all in that regard over the last several years. And as a result, he, now, he played a minimum of 75 games a year for Miami. Yep. And you saw what he did last year. So, I mean, it's, 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 it's asking a lot. It's asking a lot of the guy. It really is. They're certainly dealing with it at the right time, though. Remember that ridiculous game-winning drive by Michael Vick, and then we saw Le'Veon Bell line up in yeah. Saturday Night Football presented by Wells Fargo. Number one Ohio State takes on Penn State. That's tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern on ABC. Here's McCaffrey giving way, and it's reversed back to Hogan. How about this from Stanford? Did he catch that? Pinned against the defender's back? That is utterly incredible. Francis Owusu, that may be the play of the year so far. Wow. How in the world did Owusu do that? Sports Razzle dazzle and then bringing it on the back end. It may not be ODB's famous one-handed catch, but that was pretty sick. Stanford's Francis Owusu with maybe the catch of the year in football so far. Maybe definitely the catch of the year. Maybe Robert definitely. Smith in the house, he's yes. liking it. How ridiculous was that? It, it, it's insane. I mean, it's, it's, it's one thing because he couldn't see. He was shielded by the defender, and he has an idea of where the ball's going to go. So he, getting your hands to the place where the ball might be is one thing. But actually being able to grab it, to, to, to have the finger sensitivity once that ball gets there, to be able to catch it and then hang on as you're wrestling to the ground with another player, tremendous play right there. What do you think, Stephen A.? Oh, it was spectacular. There's no question about that. Um, I got to give a lot of credit. I've never seen a catch like that before. I mean, it wasn't Odell Beckham Jr. against Dallas last year. It wasn't that kind of catch, but it was still a sensational catch, particularly for a college football player. I give the kid a lot of credit where credit is due. I am shocked, however, that UCLA gave up 56 points. Yeah. <laughs> they seem, Stanford seemed to just have their way with them last night. This is kind of you know, like the pro throw catch. It, it remember is. The, remember that I, it's exactly like that. Yeah. You know, I, I will give this an eight on a scale of ten. Eight, the, an eight. The, the, You're the such deep, a tough critic. I know, but the defensive back, and he will go nameless here. Yeah. Well, what is he doing? If he just looks around, he didn't know that the ball was caught on his back all the way to the ground. He doesn't know what happened. Well, what's it, what's he, he going to do? Okay. He can't, okay. can't reach that point in your back. Like this. Just turn around and look. You, it's, it's an easy interception. Or you can just he put just, your hand behind your back. He, he looked your hand he, behind he your looked, back. He looked late, and you don't have enough force reaching your right to the middle of your but, back. But even if I just, you know, if you just put one hand behind your back, one, one, you bounced uh, off your and I And I got two hands on the ball. Okay. I'm, I'm hanging on to it. You're not going to be able to knock the ball from my hands if I have two hands hands on it and you just reach behind. We're going to disagree on a lot of okay, things, it's, apparently. It's, it's, oh, God, it's you guys a, are fired It's up. such a bad play by the defensive back. Am I not right? What is the classic 
well, teaching moment. You just have to look for the football. Well, if you're, if, you're, if you're out of phase like that, meaning that you're not, in, yeah. in, you're not caught up to the wide receiver, you're taught not to look back at that point. You're just taught to catch up. And then once he tries to make a play for the ball mm -hmm. to try and, and, and knock the ball out of his hands or pull his arm, rake his arm or something like that, what he does is he tries to look back at the absolute worst time. The ball just happens yeah. to be right there when he's looking back. But he got called for the penalty he did. because, he, because he's face, face guarding and he's he right up on the receiver. Wrong. Yes, you can't you can't get to the uh, back you can't get to the back of the end zone like that and not turn around and make a play. You have to understand he, he's not going to go any further. Like he can't catch the ball out of the back of the end zone and have it count. So you have to you have yeah. to turn around earlier. Listen, it was sick, Robert. Can you not be biased on this next subject though? Absolutely. Okay, tr try. Okay. All right.